Tempo Moog is a phrase you will hear a lot when people talk about OTK Demon Hunter, meaning playing Moog Artificer without a damage spell to immediately clear the board. Usually, it is a play reserved for when facing Rush Warrior or Librum Paladin due to their lack of damage spells. Alutemu, however, finds a perfect time for it here against Possessi's Miracle Rogue, when, due to Possessi playing Kazakus last turn, he knows his opponent wants to play the 5-mana Golem next turn. Even with the brutal combo of Divine Shield and Copy on the Golem, clearing them is a trivial affair for Alutemu, thanks to the Tempo Moog. Soften then up that they've run out of ways to clear the second round, and Alutemu has so little card draw at the moment, and you don't particularly want to cycle the Thalnos on this because he has alternate ways of clearing it. I'd expect just the hero power swing because the throw glaive looks a little too premium with all of these spell damage minions. But the tempo more comes down as well. Very interesting. I like this a lot. Again, Alutemu realizing that the next turn is extremely telegraphed. If it's just the straight up uh, golem. By being proactive here creates this dilemma for Possessi and Possessi is not going to take the bait. Um, worth noting that with that line, he would have to swing into a Divine Shield and so take the full 5 damage yep. without getting any lifesteal. That's probably fine in the grand scheme of things, though. Alutamu gonna start with Spectral Sight, looking for a better way to deal with this. Although, yeah, starting with Throw Glaive here is still um, an ability to fully clear after the Thalnos goes into Divine Shield. Or the more. okay. Yeah, this is the only way that actually clears it, right? Otherwise, it would only do 4 after you trade in with the... Uh... Oh, that's true. Weapon Rogue, the most aggressive face deck in the game. Cthune the Shattered, a late game control killer. Put them together and what do you get? Well, I don't know, ask Wama. He's the one that brought Cthune Weapon Rogue. He's also the one that played all four pieces before turn 11 and then instantly drew Cthune itself to win in an almost unwinnable situation on turn 12 against Tice. A weird deck but one that got warmer all the way to the finals of this week. Just because there are some, like you say, taunt minions you can get as well that could be pretty nice. And sometimes yeah. in this matchup, there are turns that you want to like fill out, if that makes sense. Six. Can't imagine it doesn't get used here, right? Yeah. It's just too perfect. I know he has the Malevolent Strike to just do it cheaper, but also what else is he actually spending his mana on this turn? But when you remove Cloak of Shadows, they don't have any way to interact with you just pointing damage at their face. I think, you know, it's a big reason why we've seen Warmer consistently banning Mate. Last time I would... Yeah, it is. You can see it there, 3 out of 4 on screen. Yep. yep boom. Comes 4 out of 4. This looks like lethal wow. to me, and I think Tice might be a little bit surprised at the fact that there is just 30 damage in hand right now from Warmer. Well, I'm just, That's it. Let me just crack the check. neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tice is like, oh, okay. Fair enough. That, though, must have been extremely scary for Wama because if he just lost the first game to Priest instantly, this series gets incredibly difficult for him. Control Warlock is played almost purely because of its absurdly good matchup against Priest. To win the matchup as Priest, you need to utilize all the tricks in your arsenal perfectly, which Language Hacker clearly knows how to do. Playing incredibly aggressively and dumping all removal spells from his hand sets up for a devastating Mind Render Elusia. And even though he can literally play zero of the cards he stole, the important part is Fled loses access to all his removal and simply crumples. My render Lucia timing could be everything. Still doesn't have enough to get to the Ticketus right now. If I can delay it. More importantly, he's stopping the removal options for yep. Fled. And it sets up lethal. Sets up lethal again. Yeah, so this is very nice. Hysteria. I mean, it's. No, but he has, he has Ysera next turn. Oh, Ysera plus Nightmare next turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my Here gosh. Go. Oh my gosh. One more. Siphon Soul. No, no, not cheap enough. Not enough. What about Soul Shear? Not enough Three either. Three. Yeah. 
Oh, this and was he's sick. Staring, he's staring at the Yasera, recognizing what happens next turn. Is there a tap? Can he like, can he like soul fragment back up? So, so, so she has one mana. It's, but it's the priest deck, so he'd, ha he'd, he'd, oh, you're the right. Maximum amount of life he could get is you're four. Right. I mean, he could, he could tap for like renew and then still be dead. Focused. Well, for no, no, it's because he gets warlock spells. This is such He's a dead. situation. He's dead. Language That's Hacker insane. Got it. Whoa, let's go, Language Hacker 2 0. Priest defeats the control warlock in the just killed him. Set. Before the nerf, you'd often see Jan disbarrel them turn four. Nowadays, you're lucky to see it before turn five. But turn three, while under the effects of a cult neophyte? It sounds impossible, but not so for Alan. By making ingenious use of Shadow Step and Octobot to get multiple reductions in one turn, he plays Jandis and sets up for a perfect field contact turn. It's plays like this that make Alan a prime contender to win playoffs next week. But you can just see how much he values denying the proc. That's just how important it is in the matchup because as soon as Alan, uh, I assume, just gonna kill off the Cult Neophyte and Dagger here, mm -hmm. When that's over, the floodgates are open. It's a huge pop-off following this. Initiating overdrive. Oh. Wow, okay. Going for double discounts, so he yeah. the Octobot. Can still get the dagger down. Plays the Vanessa so that he can cheapen the Wand Thief as well for the field contact turn next turn. You think he's going to discount it himself with the Aug Merchant or say that if he couldn't deal with it last turn, it's going to proc again this turn? I think he was thinking about holding it back entirely just so that you can go Octobot plus Org Merchant next turn on the turn you play Field Contact for an extra draw. Okay, this is... I'm so confused now. What He's happened? getting Chandis down! This turn, okay. I didn't even see that as a possibility. That's so sick. When a rogue puts you to eight health going into their turn nine, you know that Alex Straza, the life binder, is waiting in the wings to put a swift end to you. And so Muzzy had two ways to stay in this game. Kill Language Hacker that turn, or find at least two points of healing. And while either looked very unlikely, Muzzy gave us one of the most insane comebacks all season with Evocation and Anduin lending a hand too quite literally. Secret Passage into Alex Straza, doesn't have enough mana. Arbol oh Rune goodness. Orb, not enough mana. Uh, Rune Orb, Rune Orb into... Increase the cost of stuff. Yoink! Yoink armor up! He's a hero power! Heal! Oh, he can heal! He hit heal! Oh my god! Can he get he it off? Oh my gosh! The yoink! Oh, oh man! And the cycle of life is reborn. That here. is insane! Oh. Yeah, there's, there's no draw that can save him here. Language hacker is done. Muzzy's gonna win three to one. And what should have been what looked like the five game series.